Our Ludicrous Future is supported by Masterworks. Masterworks is the platform for investing in contemporary blue chip art for just a fraction of what billionaire investors pay. Investments in art were previously limited to just the super wealthy, but Masterworks is changing all of that. Based on data and science, Masterworks looks at art trends and appreciation value projections and then purchases art and makes it available to its members. The art is held until Masterworks finds the best time to sell it. And then once they do that, once they sell it, the returns are distributed to you, the investors. Masterworks also offers a secondary market in which members can actually buy and sell shares to other members. So you don't have to wait for the piece to be sold. Art is an alternative asset and one that can help you diversify your portfolio, which is especially important in a time of record high inflation and market volatility. In the past 25 years, the art market has emerged as one of the most stable with returns of 14% across that time frame. Masterworks is giving everyday people like you and me the opportunity to invest in the art world. And you can get started today at masterworks.art slash OLF. Skip the wait list and invest in blue chip art pieces at masterworks.art slash OLF. Who do you yeah. listen to, Tim? What is your inspiration? What is who's your musical god oh, that you pray to? Oh, man. I would say... The- Oh God, that changes all the time. But I feel like long term wise, like I've been a big fan of Death Cab for Cutie forever. Uh, a band called Mew. I like Sigur Ross. I like, hmm. um, I don't know, a lot of like math rock bands. Hmm. I know you always send that over. It's so cool. Yeah, I love math rock stuff. Like, like Animals battles? as Leaders. Battles is cool. That's I was trying to think of Battles the other day, and I could not think of their stupid name. Even that's not a stupid <laughs> name. It's actually an awesome name. But I just. I was sitting there like, what is that band? I could not figure it out. Yeah. Is this That's how we awesome. started the show, by the way? Are we are we Yeah. We are we are in. We are in. I mean, that's what people are here for, Tim. They want to know how to be more like you. That's what I want to no. know, anyways. I love that we <laughs> gave up on like intros and talking about what we're gonna talk about. We're just like farting into a conversation. Yeah. That's a whole new thing. We got a new it, style. I mean, yeah, it worked for evolved. Joe Rogan, right? I mean, he's kind of successful in this space. And- <laughs> He, like, doesn't even have a plan. We at least have things that we talked about we're going to talk about, right? Like, we at least have stories that are listed to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Should I tell you guys what crazy stuff has been happening in some stuff? Hit us with the space news. Well, you leave your house from time to time, so I want to hear what that's like. (laughs) (laughs) What is the outside world like? Yeah. Outside, there is a red sky, sulfuric acid. <laughs> what? Uh, no, that does Venus. the sun burn you? I heard it burns you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, let's see. Yeah, I I've had a pretty busy month of of traveling around. We're working on um, that news van that I bought that I talked to you guys about last time. I think last time we talked, I had just like we officially owned it, but then since then. Uh, since then we ended up getting it down to, uh, so Andrew drove it from North Carolina to Dallas and I took it from Dallas down to Brownsville and that lined up, uh, that lined up with when I did a recent, I did another interview with Elon like oh, up cool. on three weeks ago. Yeah. Did you post it already? No, not yet. Oh, we, I, I just, I think today by the end of day, I should have the final bits of, uh, notes for like what things I can, I cannot show hmm. like, legally. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's actually not bad. Space They're like, Hey, what's that little green man over there? Like, I oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't show that blur that out. Um, well, in I general, did see like, some, some headlines and, uh, thumbnails saying he created a, a fusion reactor and a, a warp drive and stuff. <laughs> so it's probably hidden under a tarp somewhere. That's right. Just happened. It just happened. Oh, um, God. but in general, like the SpaceX is actually really easy to work with about that kind of stuff. I mean, they're really cool. They just have to make sure that things like, I don't know, like anything that is ITAR sensitive. So international treaty and arms regulations, but again, they're like really chill about it. Um, they're also really chill about most things, but some things like just making sure things are okay to, to share, you know, I don't know. They, mm-hmm. they have to go over everything. So, um, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to release that soon, but then I can't. So then after that, I went home. Finished a video. Did you hear that? Finished a video. Is this the one I think I just saw pop up about how to start rocket engines or something? It's how to power a rocket engine. Yeah. How to power engine cycles. Yep. Exactly. Um, And then uh, then I came back down and we started building out the van and we actually like got really far 
<clears throat> we have a, a workable it's it's working like it's not done yet with the like add some the, the exterior panel and finish up a few other things like the intercom system and stuff like that but it's like it's pretty much done have I you mean, named it done, but yeah it's mars Luna. v Oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> like Luna Mars Van. locational uplinking networking asset. Mm. And I like that. It's kind of like the, the moon because the moon like orbits around, you know, like, so it's like, we'll take this thing around all over the place. Oh, uh, clever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was uh, working on a, a script about kind of laying out the entire Artemis program plan. <clears throat> There's a lot of acronyms. Some yeah. of them are impressive. <laughs> so you, which you're, ones, you're on that level. Which one's your favorite? Well, there's Prism. There's uh, Viper. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Prism. The NSA yeah. one. I don't no. have it in front of me, so I can't tell you what it stands for. Prism, Remember the whole Prism. Edward yeah. Snowden thing? It, it yeah. was, Is that what he was talking about? Yeah, the program was called Prism. <laughs> oh, okay. It, it was, was like the... the the world's Go largest ahead. social network. You're already on there, and so are all of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have no choice. Would it be safe to say he went to Prism Prison? Ooh. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. We're all very yeah. impressed. But, um, I also still like, I, I, I know it's effects. not. The, the one thing that always comes up in for the Artemis program is uh, the, the term NRHO, which is near rectilinear halo orbit. Uh -huh. Like That's just the most nerdy sounding like you know like orbital parameter ever they're like quick they got into a near rectilinear halo orbit you know get them i don't know like blue know, team rectilinear go. sounds like it could go up your butt or something <laughs> oh there's one called trident too i haven't even heard of that one is we this have, um, prime one is this a requirement cap. for your job like it, if you go work at NASA or something, it's like good at making acronyms. It's like a, acronyms, like higher. No matter what. Yeah. <laughs> like okay, that's our, the one thing I could do at NASA is make acronyms for things. <laughs> our our mission name is actually Tyrannosaurus seventy eight. <laughs> now make it work. Yeah, it's like, transport for rectilinear. <laughs> anal. Oh jeez. Right, yeah. Joe, you have to bring back the uh, Joe. You have to bring back the Bureau of Naming Things or whatever that sketch yeah, was. I do that need was, to do another sketch like that. Yeah. That was my favorite one ever. I think that was mine too. I think that was definitely my favorite thing, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get back into the sketches. I've been kind of just trying to get stuff out lately. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can I, well, can I tell you guys what I, what I'm excited about though? What just happened last week that, or the, earlier this week, that was really, really, really fun. Let's hear it. Ben, you might want to pull up a tweet from Peter Beck that I linked Ooh. you. <laughs> I can, I can try to do that. Uh, because this, Mr. this was Beck? really cool. Did you happen to see this Joe? The, the from rocket the helicopter? Lab? Yeah. I mean, I just saw it when you kind of threw it up a second ago. But... So, um, if you look at Peter, Peter underscore J underscore Beck, the CEO and founder of Rocket Lab's Twitter feed, you will see a rocket dangling from a parachute and some people inside of a helicopter flying towards it. Now, what's cool about this, they've tested this a, a whole bunch, the, the idea of catching a rocket with a parachute for ultimately ho uh, hoping to be able to catch one from space. And that's exactly what this actually is. On Monday... Um, for the mission, oh my gosh, what was it called? Uh, not return to sender. Which one was it? There and back again. Or there and back again. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I think I saw that somewhere. Yep, there and back again. Um, was their first attempt at actually catching one of their rockets, the rocket booster, after it had already, you know, gone through stage separation and sent the second stage off uh, on its way into orbit, and then it fell back to Earth and uh, survived re-entry and then pulled a parachute once it was slow enough to do so. And then uh, the helicopter successfully did hook up with it and, and carry it and catch it. Um, the problem is uh, they ended up having to drop it. They, they pulled the, like kind of pulled the plug on it once they did snag it. For some reason that just wasn't, the, the helicopter uh, pilot said it just wasn't feeling right. Um, hmm. You know, in other words, it just wasn't, easy to control and obviously you have human lives on board the helicopter no space hardware is worth risking the lives of those on board the helicopter so he ended up letting go which is no big deal because it still ended up having time to redeploy its shoot you know the shoot once they let go mm. reinflated and and softly splashed down in the ocean they were able to retrieve it actually if you look through peter beck's uh twitter here um he's actually got a few 
extra pictures and stuff of recovery. How, it was how is he awesome. not verified, by the way? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that honestly crazy? That is, I mean, he is like a the reason why they invented that feature, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Do, do you think Elon will verify him? Oh, oh yeah. No, I definitely. I think I think Elon's actually a pretty big fan of Peter Beck. Honestly, how could you yeah, not be? Is. Peter Beck is awesome. He really is. So li- look at this. You get a shot of, the, of their of their uh, their sea vessel. There uh, has this giant like robotic crane arm thing that grabs onto the booster, bobbing around in the ocean, and is able to pick it up and put it onto this cradle. There, how cool hmm. is that? It's got yeah. its own Canada arm. <laughs> it does. So that makes me wonder. It's if a rectilinear were... orbit. If I've ever seen one. <laughs> <laughs> so um let me let me teach you guys a, a little fun thing about uh about so th- for now they're eventually they want to just fly the helicopter straight out to where the the rockets you know re-entering and they want to just fly it all the way back is my understanding um is fly it all the way back to land and that's what well, that's what peter beck told me uh last time i spoke with him in december but for these early ones um they're they're basically grabbing onto it and then laying it down on on a sea vessel just i think just so they have more margins for safety you know more fuel margins more more everything you know just just making it safer i think i think that's why they're doing it this way um because peter beck made it sound like sea vessels are just hilariously expensive so they're Mm. trying everything they can to not have to send this out to sea but um Mm. yeah yeah i wonder how far i mean yeah because the like fuel of a helicopter is not cheap either right and right Fuel. I mean, I, I know these aren't like Falcon Nine size, but still, it's. A, I would imagine a decent sized payload, right? It's it's about a metric ton, so twenty two hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty darn light. Um, and they Peter said like I think it's an hour and a half flight on the helicopter, like to get out to the, the rendezvous point. Would fly around for a good hour ish, you know, two hours, you know, um, and then an hour and a half back. So it's about four four maybe five hours of flight time, and they have an extended. <laughs> Uh, you know, tank for range extension and, and flight yeah. extension on it. And he's, I think he quoted either six or $10,000 per hour with, with the helicopter. Mm-hmm. So you look at it, you're maybe between 30 to 50, maybe 60 or $75,000 to recover mm-hmm. a multi-million dollar piece of hardware. That's, sounds that seems reasonable. to make sense. Yeah, that yeah. sounds totally reasonable. <laughs> so um, I, I do think they're on to something. Um, of course, the splashing down aspect wasn't ideal. Um, not fully ideal, but I mean, at the same time, they, they did go through all of the ranges of motion. Now they just have to put all the pieces together next time. Um, and I think they will, I think they'll be able to, uh, to, to figure it out. And they seem to be pretty confident that, that they'll get it solved. And obviously it's all of the, all of the things are doable. It's just making sure that they can actually do it reliably and safely, um, over and over and then make sure it's worth it to, to keep doing that too, you know, cause the, you know, the, the ride to, to buy a, a to, Launch on Electron is something like, you know, five between five to six million dollars. So it's not like a mm-hmm. high cost thing. So of course at some point it does come down to like, what is their margin on this? How much does it actually cost to do all this? Is it worth it to do it? Uh even if it breaks even, is it worth it? You know, because by the time they get it back, they still have to do some probably ref- refurbishment, yeah. do a handful of things. Um, Peter's made it sound like the their biggest reason for wanting to do it was actually to um relieve um the production, you know, ease production. So they don't have to produce as many of these things. Um, that's, mm-hmm. I think, their biggest thing, not necessarily trying to save money directly, but saving, you know, money, time, and energy, I guess. Um, yeah. Did so. uh, Do you think that they'll be able to reuse this one um, booster? I'm, I'm guessing when it splashes down, I don't think they'll be reused, but I mm-hmm. think they still got what they wanted out of it by being able to, examine it and you know see like how the heat shield did we saw that picture that peter posted with the heat shield um so yeah so i, I think there was also a tweet from from rocket lab that showed the view looking down from the helicopter during their live stream they had a really good feed actually of from the helicopter it's awesome it's really impressive um but yeah there's rocket lab that's so i mean that's kind of the economics of it is what will drive it though right i mean that was yeah if, if i remember i mean Besides a couple tragic accidents, the the space shuttle, the problem with it was that it was supposed to be an economic solution, but it it didn't turn out to be. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I mean, what? Yeah. It came down to um, 
realistically, it just wasn't necessarily cheaper to do it, uh, but cheaper by really any way you cut it. But right. uh, spatial is spatial is hard to to really just say that with a blank slate. They'll just like it wasn't economical because it also did some things that were physically impossible. You know, like be able to repair satellites and launch payloads that that were really really uh, difficult to launch and. Um, yeah. had down mass capabilities. So, it, I mean, it was, it was a different beast when people just use like the, the dollar per kilogram, you know, like the payload per, per pound or whatever, you know, uh, the cost analysis like that, it doesn't quite do it justice. Also like keeping in mind that it could carry like seven people relatively comfortably, uh, yeah. was extremely impressive. So it, it is a little disingenuous <laughs> to just say it was like totally not worth, you know, or not, not to say you were saying that, but like when people no, do no. say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, that's sort of the mainstream narrative, right? Right. But, we, yeah. but but you're saying there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, and if I remember, it was kind of shut down right in the middle or like a financial crisis. Like we're having, like economically, there were a lot of, uh, like, like, like the support for and the popularity for the whole program kind of waned. Yeah. And and we had, you know, obviously some tragic accidents there. That yeah, that the really second with failure people. with Columbia really, yeah. really was the, was the thing that, that just kind of made it like, why are we still like doing this? The one, two punch. Is this that photo you were talking yeah. about here? The uh, Yeah. Is that just a photo, not a video? Yeah, that's just a but photo on there. During their the live log. stream, they had a really surprisingly great feed of a helicopter in the middle of the ocean. It was very impressive. And we're able to actually, you know, bring us this live. And it was, it was fun. It was really cool to watch. Yeah, that looks like a still shot from the video. I remember seeing it. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was, re that was really, really, really fun to watch. So. Is it, yeah. can, can we just talk about the real hero here, which is this like little carabiner and, and, yeah. and <laughs> rope? That's like that... a $10 thing you buy at Home Depot yeah. holding up <laughs> this rocket. Like... They just went to REI before they flew. <laughs> yeah, they're like, ground. hey, where do we get? I don't know, just, just go down to the store. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it is impressive the loads that that can handle. Because obviously you have to think about at some point it's going to be greater than, you know, than a, a metric ton because it's going to like, you know, having to. Well, the drag of it and yeah. all that kind and, of thing. And just like the quick jerk of jerk nature, you know? So, yeah. So, so they was... want to eventually uh, bring it back to land and like just kind of helicopter drop it down onto something on land. I think so. Right? Yeah. Yeah. My... Big foam pit, you know? Well, I'm sure they've got <laughs> a big ball pit. Yeah. <laughs> big ball pit. Uh, just... Big bowl of rice. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> That's only yeah. if it lands in the water first. Yeah. 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 Just put it in some rice and I'll think. No. Um, I was just kind of wondering how they are going to not damage the engine bells. Right. They, like what's the, I'm sure they've got a plan. I just wonder what it is. Yeah, no, I do too. Uh, that, that arm that was on the, you know, the robot thing that was on the, the boat. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised if, if that's articulate enough or if they can use it like one of those, what are the, the KUKA robots or whatever? They're like, you know, popular all over like multiple industries that are can be yeah. so fast and accurate. I'm sure it'd be relative in the, relatively easy you know to like <laughs> to maybe program that well, to orient perfectly and, and smoothly and gently grab onto it you know yeah and then you know i mean the helicopter can just hover there right yeah. like it'll it'll but sway I, I a little like bit it's on a long rope though so i i would be nervous yeah. it'd be like oscillating and stuff on the rotor wash and all that stuff so yeah i yeah. am curious i'm excited to learn more about that and there's a chance i might be able to catch up with peter again here um i seem to be able to catch up with him almost every six months which is really fun <laughs> Because he is awesome. His he's mm -hmm. one of my favorite people to interview, honestly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he seems like a really good guy. And their their headquarters, I remember from your videos, like just really, really cool. It, it yeah, looks I want to go there just like to see a space it. headquarters. Like it looks like, yes. oh yeah, they do space things here. Yes. This is <laughs> like that wasn't just a movie. That was real. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. Super fun. Yeah. So that was that was the the thing that I I thought I had a ton of fun watching that and just cheering for them because that was like so cool honestly that was so yep. fun to to see that you know finally kind of come together and see them catch it before it hit the ground you know so yeah well and so so that so so it fell off of the helicopter right yeah they like full blown like let it rip off it and, didn't fall off they had it they definitely had it secure and were happy with how like. They had it, you know, and then mm -hmm. the handling characteristics of the helicopter were, were less than ideal, I guess. W were there any other space companies that had things fall off this past few weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, man. <laughs> yes. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't know what the implications are, and I don't want to blow this out of water, but it's just like the last thing that Boeing's yeah. Starliner needs is something like this. 
they were towing it, just driving uh, from you know the integration facility to the to the launch pad to be integrated onto the rocket, and something just falls off. You know, and granted, that could be something that was intended to be taken off once at the pad. Um, yeah, I heard it's just protective covering, so it was gonna it was gonna be coming off anyway. But yeah. Is this Doesn't... a video of it falling off? I mean, we have a video. Yeah, you here, see but... it. Look in the top. Oh, right, there it goes. Right there. <laughs> oh, what? yeah, yeah. Is a Mark Watney in there? What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't inspire confidence in something that's already been riddled with so many uh, problems that it's just like we want. I just want to have this thing fly. It's supposed to fly here at the end of the month. I just want it to fly and just be able to cheer for it and be like, sweet. You know? Yeah, I love. The top one, <laughs> top comment is Starliner has reached max Q, maximum air pressure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. So max Q for Starliner is like five miles an hour. There's one. <laughs> Sadly, did they is... even stop? Did, were they just keep driving? Like, did anybody even they're... notice that? Yeah, that's. I, I think the van, one of those vehicles behind it, did notice. But this is also after they made it to, you know, McDonald's. It looks like there's like a very heavily trafficked area. <laughs> yeah, they, when, they, they they were looking for a McDonald's with a working ice cream machine is what happened. That's why it took so long. Yes, mm. that's why. And, and of course, you know, they went out on the interstate and minimum speed limit there is 55 mile an hour. And that's what happened. Oh, man. Bad news bears, you know. Oh, Maybe yeah. the, the people who make the McDonald's ice cream machines also made... The Starliner protective covering. That's you've seen the whole conspiracy theory about the the I've McDonald's seen ice cream video about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because because the company that repairs them is like also owned by McDonald's, so they're like mm -hmm. always broken because they have this contract they have to fulfill with the maintenance company. Oh and, and somebody like created a, a device that can can keep it maintained or something. That right. it's like an app or whatever. And they got sued. Yeah, for making <laughs> things better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. That's America for you. That's America. Yeah. Uh like, I'm well, not a conspiracy more... theorist, but from time to time there's <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a conspiracy. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um I did want to mention real quick one more time on Starliner just to remind people that that forgot. Uh Starliner first flew what well, was it the end of twenty twenty or end of twenty nineteen? Oh gosh. <laughs> It all blends. Was it 2019? I think it was 2019. Yeah, it was 2019. I think so. Holy cow. Um, almost three years. So, yeah, over two years. And that was the one where, you know, it, it the launch looked nice. Um, and uh, it, it rides on top of an, an Atlas V, a United Launch Alliance uh, Atlas V. It, it got into orbit. And then immediately, as soon as it detached from the Atlas V, it just started, like, randomly firing its thrusters. Oh, and right wasted a bunch of a bunch of its limited propellant and they ended up having to it was because the clock thought it was like it, the clock was off basically we're like 90 minutes or something and thought that it was at a different portion in the mission so it was starting to do phasing maneuvers that it shouldn't have been trying to do at that point and uh it wasted too much propellant to be able to make it to the iss and back and then then they also had problems right before re-entry they found a line of code that would have potentially made it so the when they jettison a thing to like show to get the heat shield exposed the trunk that would have jettisoned has its own thrusters and could have potentially just shot right back into the heat shield. Like they discovered that like four hours before re-entry or something in the code. Jeez. It's like, so that's, that's the type of stuff where people were so upset. Like how did these big, huge software flaws and then, and then they made it out to the pad again in 2021. Um, and then they rolled it all out, got it totally ready for launch. And all of a sudden it had problems with humidity in the valves and they couldn't get certain valves to open and close uh and they had to roll it back and it was just very confusing so yeah is and this it, why most rockets are like 60 years old because basically hey it worked yeah. <laughs> and we know how it worked yeah. like I we're mean, good let's not there's something to that. this yeah there is something to that you know and that that's why I, I think that's actually honestly why a lot of the a lot of the industry really doubted SpaceX at first because they were like, we're going to do more off the shelf parts, vertical integration. We're just going to reinvent all these little things. And people were just like, dude, we've been we've gone through all the anything you can think of. We've tried. Yeah, and I'm sure that's like a lot of the the you know, because during the 50s and 60s, when you know, especially when it was like mi these were missiles and these were defense and this was like a matter of putting every single penny into these into these programs 
uh, yeah, they tried a lot of stuff. They tried a ton, mm -hmm. a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff. So I'm sure they're kind of going like, yeah, good luck trying sure, something guys. they tried. Yeah, yeah, good luck. But, you know, through sheer, sheer will and, and determination, SpaceX definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of... What they were able to do. I mean, the, the thing that and, and maybe I'm just, you know, a dad that thinks of it differently. But like the thing that I love about SpaceX and what they've been able to do isn't really any of the the tangible things. It's the fact that like kids are excited about space again, mm -hmm. you know, it, like yeah. n n not that they not that they like ever really waned. But like now there is like really cool, um, like magical kind of unreal things happening. And you're like, that was real. Like. You know, me and Joe were there. We saw, well, and you were there too, Tim, but but we saw the Falcon Heavy boosters come down in real life. Like, just mind-blowing stuff where you're like, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I mean, I guess we had the space shuttle was our was our thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's cool. It's, it's a bigger effect, I think, yeah. personally, like yeah. a societal kind of impact, which then will lead to the next generation of kids that want to do this stuff and come up with the next version of this, you know? Yeah, exactly. I can't um, tell you how many comments or, or emails I've gotten from people that, you know, uh, because of SpaceX, we're, we're like, oh, my God, I want to do this. And we yeah. started studying that in college or whatever. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's having a real effect on the world. It's it's, yeah. it's more intangible. Like you said, you can't really measure it. But I think that yeah. over time, it, yeah. it adds up. Yeah. I mean, yep. I can't tell you how many people are like that, uh, that, yeah, email or will run into me. uh you know, in real life or something, be like three years ago, four years ago, I didn't care about any of this. And now I'm an aerospace engineer or now I work for, you know, SpaceX and it, they're just so yeah. excited and there's just so much stuff going on. So. I mean, even your story, Tim, is kind of like that, right? I mean, yeah, you were doing photography and stuff like that and just yeah. like got into it and just kept getting deeper and deeper. And now you're like a legit <laughs> science communicator. No, like, you know, coming out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you've got a news van. I mean, how more official right. can you get? I do have a get? news van. I am official now. <laughs> I, I'm excited Finally. to pull up to Kennedy Space Center for the first time in that thing because I think, you know, there's like the right lane and the left lane. And I have a feeling we're going to get into that right lane once we pull up. At the <laughs> put, put the meatball logo on the outside or something like that. But don't have it say NASA. Have it say like everyday astronaut or something. But with the NASA logo. Exactly. You pull exactly. up and they don't let you in. You're just like, oh, yeah. And you hit the button and the thing goes. <laughs> exactly I love exactly it. well on that note uh, i know we're we always start off with like a just a crap ton of me talking for way too long um but <laughs> that's um, why that's why we're here tim <laughs> um but so spacex this year by the way speaking of the the steamroller effect and stuff spacex has already launched they are they're exactly on track with um with launching once a week all year long and that is absolutely insane um yeah i'm trying to find the actual this is not working for me but yeah it's they are officially at once a week which is crazy so yeah, yeah. there we go um they've got what is it show 13 so far in 2022 yeah and i think actually that one might need to be updated i think they launched one more time this morning technically which so 14 already yeah. this year and we're what first week of may like yeah that's insane it's pretty that's good. absolutely um pam black is saying 18 is 18 right 18 is a Not lot according of... to oh this was to release date as of march the date oh god then here. yeah SpaceX. holy cow yeah i think it is there you go actually i was sitting here in my head i was like is that 30. 13 weeks into the year of may what so right. 17 times total, according to this chart here on what website we'll give you guys credit SpaceX stats.xyz. Uh, he's pulling is, it from your site, yeah. My site's saying 18. <laughs> is this what like, uh, your site, Tim? No, in, in Discord, is this your uh, site, Tim? No, and <laughs> oh. that one might need to be updated because oh, okay. this just happened to, like another one is this morning, so I think 18 is right. Okay, well, this shows on... 17, so oh. yeah, so yeah, 18. Okay, regardless. Yeah. basically once <laughs> once a week i mean they're doing it and that's crazy so yeah, yeah pretty, pretty... Are, are they still gonna do the thing where it like lands and just refuels and goes again like same day like what's no. the turnaround time because i wasn't they, that the idea a while ago that, yep i think that was a topic we had once was like you know elon announced they're gonna try to do a 24-hour turnaround with the falcon 9 and yeah. um 
basically what it comes out they're starting to do these short ones the other day they did a 21 day turnaround which is of a single booster that's quite short and they're talking about i was wondering what the record was yep i think 21 is currently the record <clears throat> and they're talking about pushing that even more just kind of now that they're like whatever <laughs> they're like who cares you know if they're launching their own starlinks it's like at least it's not you know yeah. a customer's payload or something exactly exactly so they yeah, are the risk is uh, theirs yep yep and so they're working on, I think, decreasing it and kind of pushing that a little bit more. But I don't think with Falcon 9, it's, Elon said it's not, it's not the correct architecture to be able to, uh, to, be able to launch you know, once a day or, or to do a 24-hour turnaround or even a 48-hour turnaround. I think it's more like they might get it down to like a week or 10 days someday. But mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Still fun. Still cool. Awesome. Considering awesome. the space shuttle was like, I think the quickest turnaround ever was the space shuttle was like 45 or 60 days or something. Like it was... It was, yeah, and that was fast, but I mean, getting down to twenty-one days with people on board, though, you're going to probably take yes. more time. You know? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to rush that one. And they already, yeah, and and we have three, we have three boosters that have flown twelve times already. Three of their boosters in their fleet have flown twelve wow. times. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Amazing. Well, it's speaking of a uh, turnaround time, uh, mm -hmm. Joe, I think there's some improvements in the turnaround time of breaking down plastic that you wanted to talk about or that someone wanted you to talk about. Somebody <laughs> wanted me to talk about. Uh, luckily, I spent a whole uh, 10 minutes perusing this uh, this article. <laughs> so I don't know if this... Um, yeah, so this is... Okay. How about I just talk about it? So scientists discover a method to break down plastic in days, not centuries. Um so this is something that I've, I've been sent stuff about this for, for a while for various things. And I don't know right offhand if this is like some kind of record breaking thing um, or what like it normally takes with using enzymes to break down plastics and stuff. I will say the thing that I found interesting in this was that um, my, <laughs> cause I'm reading through it and it's like, okay, so they have these enzymes that break down plastic. Well, that's fine, but it's still something that's going to cost money so there still has to be some economic incentive for people to go through this. And then you get down to the bottom of this article and it says, I'll just read it. How about I just read it? Um, if I can find it, <laughs> I can't find it. Um, it breaks down the plastic into like the polymers into its original monomers, mm -hmm. like the original stuff that they made it with so mm -hmm. that they can take those monomers. Okay, here we go. Uh, it does do so a process called depolymerization in which a catalyst separates the building blocks that make up the PET, that's a type of plastic, into their original monomers, which, the, which can then be repolymerized, built back into virgin plastic and converted into other products. So the big problem with plastic recycling is that um, you can only do it a handful of times, if that even that, before it becomes so before it just falls apart, you know, yeah. and it's not usable. Well, let's say it falls apart, breaks down into microplastics that get in your bloodstream, which is always good stuff. So, <laughs> um, but the idea with this is that it actually breaks it down into the original, you know, stuff, and then they can like remake it into actually virgin plastic. So it can be done over and over and over again. That's, in theory. And this is what's being done in the lab. That's really important. <laughs> Like yeah. the plastic pollution thing is one of those. That's definitely one of the, you know, we talked about this, I think last time we got together where we're like, what are the things we're going to be looking back on? Or, or maybe it wasn't, yeah. like, maybe it was a conversation where it's like, what are the things that were like so barbaric in our use of plastics is definitely gonna be like, can you believe they just use plastic everywhere and like got all mm -hmm. over the ocean and all over everything? Yeah. Well, plastic that's, was sort of a, a sort of like a wonder material in the early days, right? Cause it, it was a byproduct, mm -hmm. if I remember of refining, oil yeah. so yeah. yeah so from and it was like a i mean I, uh, i'll probably get it wrong but it was like rockefeller or somebody like, like like that long ago where they're like we need to do something with all this waste and then like some scientists figured out how to make plastic with it right and that's mm -hmm. like how it came to be and then now it's almost impossible to think of a world without it oh right like like everything you know my, my microphone yeah. my headphone like, like no, everything everybody listening yeah everybody yeah. wherever you're listening to this look around you yeah. And look at how much plastic stuff it is. And look at the thing you're looking that, at this on. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> that will never break down. All of this stuff you're looking at right now, it will never break down. That's great. Yeah. Fully. That's and gross. That it sucks. is forever. <laughs> and, and, and the biggest bummer of the whole thing was that the whole concept of recycling plastic is, is a scam and, and was created by this industry to trick us into thinking it was okay to keep 
buying and yeah. consuming plastic. Right. And so that's kind of the bummer of the whole thing. So, but hopefully something like this maybe could change that equation, whether it be yeah. actually making recycling like economically viable or just, yeah. hey, you have to do this. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you, you make X amount of plastic, you must you know, uh, break down X amount of plastic in return for that to try to balance yeah. it out. I don't know. Well, the thing about plastic that's so wonderful is the same thing that makes it so devastating is that it's so cheap to make. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, there's no recycling process, whatever the, even if this is a perfect process that, that just got discovered here, I mean, it's not going to be as cheap as just making virgin plastic. Right. It's just right. the cheapest thing in the world. And, and so that's what made it so popular. And everybody's like, oh, you can just make a plastic bag and just throw it away. And it's, you know, it's nothing. Yeah. And it costs like a fraction of a fraction of a penny to make it. <laughs> well, but yeah. that's the problem, though, is like, like there's absolutely no incentive to, to recycle it or, or reuse it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I actually um, on that. No, I wonder if like what theoretically what would happen if our uh, oil consumption did reduce to like 10 percent of what it is now? Would that, I, I um, wonder like how, how like it tied went down together. 10 yeah, like, or yeah, down it went 90%. down, down 90%. Yeah. Down, oh, wow. it, 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 like if we were started, you know, in, in 15 years, if the world all of a sudden was using one tenth the amount of oil that we use today, just making it some made up numbers, do you think it's proportional? Like, do you think all of a sudden then plastic would become more expensive to make and produce and they'd be looking for alternate solutions to make it? Um, hmm. Or do you think it's like there's such an abundance of the leftover stuff that they're just like, oh, we have this for uh, 600 decades or something, you know, like. Yeah, I, I, I would lean on that. I, I, I would venture a guess that it wouldn't change much in terms of how how much it costs to make plastic. There were not like a one to one production of the, our needs for oil and our production of plastics <laughs> aren't like perfectly in line. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around actually reducing our oil or uh, oil consumption by that much. I, I just don't. Well, at some point we won't have a choice because there's a, there's the only limited supply of it on the planet. You know, I mean, it may be far out in the future, but okay. like, I'll give you that. Eventually, we're gonna have to leave. Yeah. I really wonder how much in like 200 years or so people would look back and just see what we're living in right now is this insane bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where like petroleum production and like all these things like just kind of like flew through the roof and then it was like, oh yeah, we can't do that forever. And we finally <laughs> pull our heads out of it. But, um, but everything about what we're living through is so abnormal in every way. Yeah, exactly. Like. Well, and but I have a little hope if you look at things like, you know, Norway or some of these uh, countries that are all of a sudden, you know, getting really like they're reducing their oil consumption like crazy. Um, that trend, you know, not necessarily saying yeah. they're, you know, there now or anything, but that trend is in the right direction <clears throat> and does point to a, a period where we could actually be like, oh yeah, they are actually using one tenth the amount of oil they were, you know, X amount of time ago. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool. Did yeah. you, um, do you follow Windover Productions? Mm -hmm. That channel? Yeah. yeah. He had a video, uh, at some point this week. I've been so busy this week. I've barely even gotten on YouTube, yeah, but I, I like, you know, got on there for a minute last night and I saw his video. Um, he was basically making the argument about why oil prices and gas prices have gone through the roof right now. Um, and it's pretty long and, and compl complicated, but um, he's kind of making the argument that this is petroleum's last gasp. And, um, hmm. you know, now that the cost of renewables is actually getting down low enough to where it's kind of competitive or cheaper, um, economically than than oil um anyway i'm sure there's a counter argument to it but i mm -hmm. found it to be an interesting point that he was making there yeah well, for, we'll again see. for this stuff I, I was like looking at the trends again you're like what which direction is it trending and oil by all measurement is going to like going to not be cheaper to produce someday like it it's mm -hmm. probably plateaued it might someday, you know, who knows? It might have some big reserve somewhere and be like, whoa, we have enough oil, blah, blah, blah. It'll be way cheap or something. But it's not well, likely just like continually declining in price. And that's exactly what renewables are doing, you know? Yeah, I think that that the 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 thing there that, that sticks out is the price, and this is kind of what, uh, I don't know the guy's name, but the Wendover production guy. The thing he would, I think the point he was trying to make, and I think is a point like a lot of people have thought of, is the price that you pay of gasoline at the pump is not 
super correlated with how much oil there actually is or how yeah. much it costs to even make a gallon of gasoline. Like these things are so much based on economics, like like macroeconomic mm -hmm. trends, like futures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like like oil futures because there was that thing, and and he, I, I watched uh, some of that video where uh, at some point the price of a barrel of oil was actually negative. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it was and, like and so. A lot of this is a reaction <clears throat> to that, right? Mm -hmm. Right, it bounced yeah. back, but it, it's one of those things. So I, I brought up a chart here, and it's not about oil, but it's it's related. It's total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. And to, to talk positive about stuff, I mean, if you look at the trend <laughs> the past several years, even like since 2006 is kind of where we had a peak, it's been a really steady decline and a very sharp decline. Now, 2020, greenhouse gases, you know, there was kind of a reason for no yeah. one's traveling and yeah. things like that. So, so, but the overall trend is definitely down. And this is in the US, which is great because we uh, are, are one of the worst polluters in the world. So if you think about that, I mean, it's good. Like, like things are heading in the mm -hmm. right direction. You know, this is like always the uh, the Gates Foundation paper that everyone gets sponsored by, except me. Um, <laughs> uh, about about it, you know, the world is actually doing much better than I think the media generally portrays. And you know, we talked a little bit about it. Like, if it bleeds, it leads, right? Because mm -hmm. negative things are much more clicky than positive things. But yeah, I mean, so if if the general demand for oil is going down, I think is what you're saying, Tim. Will the price of plastic of making plastic go up so much so that it makes a difference right is that yeah. the thesis yeah yeah, yeah. The, the hypothesis i don't know about a thesis well okay. hypothesis <laughs> a, a hypothesis hypothesis, yeah. hypothesis. Oh. i never realized wait, that until wait, just wait, right is now. That, yeah is that where that comes from i would assume and like not a what's hypo mean in latin like what's well, if you're a hypochondriac <laughs> See, I know a, that hyper and hypo mean different things. I always just said thesis as in hypothesis as like short for that for me. Ooh. But I think no. that makes sense. If 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 hyper goes up, then hypo would go down. It, so it, it's like a lesser thesis, right? Mm. It, I'm and you start guys are only know... offering hyper theses. <laughs> yeah. You guys are no better than me. But but a theory, if I understand the correct science like science educator term, a theory is something that's actually been proven. Like, like it's, mathematically, there's a proof for it, but we say theory, repeatable. right? Because like, like Isaac Newton's laws and, you know, Einstein's theories, like, like Einstein disproved some of Isaac Newton's things or something like that. So it was a theory because we always leave the door open to being proven wrong versus yep. like, this is fact or something, right? It's, it's basically like, it's only wrong in the sense, it's, it's, it's the only fact in the sense that no one's ever figured out how it right. would be wrong. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's a theory always, right? Like yeah. the theory of relativity is a theory. And gravity. Yeah, right. Theory it's a theory mm -hmm. because eventually we'll figure out a giant yeah. flying spaghetti monster is really to blame for all of our all the laws of physics, right? And his noodly mm -hmm. appendage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his holy uh, spaghetti head. Now, what's that? Yeah, what's that where's my called? colander? Colander. Uh, yes. Thank <laughs> you. That was so good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question about about making that stuff and whether or not it will be more expensive I, I think just the dem if we, we need just alternatives to plastic like it's it's impossible like it's really hard but i think that's where my money would go if i were a multi-billionaire being able to fund things you know mm. that and uh <laughs> and making batteries i would put money towards yeah. making batteries what do you guys think about I that would too i wish there was a what <laughs> <laughs> i wish i had many pulled it up out. fast <laughs> well, look at <laughs> that we wow. just start having like a someone that just is always drinking water during these transitions. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. What? U.S. Department of Energy announces three billion towards EV battery manufacturing supply chain. What? That would be a great like gimmick in a talk show. Just have like one guy like that is his it's whole so job is to be Mr. Spit Take. <laughs> he's he's off in a different room so it doesn't make everything a mess. And literally they just cut to him like whenever they Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's just in there drinking water. A light turns on and he does it. And yeah. that's it. That's his whole existence. Like he doesn't even know what he what he does. He just like is is a like comes into this building and sits there. <laughs> Probably doing it at home on Zoom these I mean like you know, if you think about how many people like on our sidekicks on side, sh like on talk shows that have literally nothing to do. So that's, yeah, yeah, pretty good. So this is, uh, comes to us from our friends at Electrek on May 2nd. 
uh, about the U.S. Department of Energy announcing a 3.1 billion fund from the infrastructure bill from uh, from old President Biden there, Grandpa Joe, as I like to call him. Um, Grandpa Joe. I, I I had a grandpa named Joe that looked exactly like him. Which was like, anyway, <laughs> so it's not just like some weird reference. That's anyways. Um, so they're they're trying to they're talking about battery recycling and they're talking about uh, expanding lithium production. And they're talking about um, electric vehicle battery second life applications. So this is all kind of very good. Um, I just posted a video covering kind of this exact. It's funny. It's like I think I posted the video, and of course, five minutes later, this article drops, um, <laughs> as as it happens, uh, because as it, happens. as it turns out, like you know, m maybe. I, I'm just nervous for things, but like EV movement's been going so strong. We're hitting like 5% of new car sales ish, depending on how you, how you slice it. Uh, and if you include plugins and things, it's like, like things are going really well for the EV movement right now, but we're heading into this kind of shortage of materials, like raw materials at, at the start. And then battery production as well is also being constrained. And it, it's not really just EVs, obviously, that, that are the consumers of these things, right? Like it's our smartphones, everything. it's our laptops, it's literally yeah. power tools, medical devices, like literally everything takes basically the same kinds of batteries, which we've you know, now proven to be our current best energy, most energy dense kind of technology we can make. So um, so with that, with the demand for everything going up, that means prices are going up. This is where like Rivian, you know, had the whole price hike fiasco. Uh, and then, you know, Tesla, Tesla has actually been able to hedge a lot of this because they smartly started investing heavily in this very early on. And mm. I just saw that they signed another big deal uh, for nickel supply, which is another thing. Um, so things are going, you know, so, but like we're heading into territory here where the demand for EVs is becoming so big that it is going to really put a const uh, constraint on this. Plus, you have like another lockdown in China that tells the factory we shut down for mm -hmm. uh, some period of time. I don't know, a few weeks or something like that. But so, you know, we're trotting along. We're looking at, yeah, EVs are going like it tells us, you know, crushing it. And all the other automakers are coming on board and like EVs everywhere. And anyone in the auto space, that's all that's interesting is electric stuff. But it's like, we also like need a gazillion more batteries. So it's exciting mm -hmm. to see that in the US we're doing this. Um, the research I did on my video showed that 80% of the uh, battery grade materials for that, that are being made are controlled by China. And, mm -hmm. you know, politics, geopolitics yeah. can play a role in that. Plus, Biden has not changed the the tariffs that Trump put in place with China. If you remember, that was like our our uh, trade war is was the term mm -hmm. people were using. So, you know, if we're in a trade war and you're not playing nice and we own 80 percent of the materials you need to make those things, mm, you know, yeah, it doesn't so, I was wondering that. if that tariff is ever going to go away, because I feel like Chinese cars would just flood the market. They absolutely Chinese would. EVs, especially. Yeah. Neo yeah. comes to mind. I mean, yeah. they, they've got the uh, they've got a twenty five thousand dollar vehicle that goes four hundred miles on a charge. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, when you import now, the irony is I'm like, who cares? Import that it, it, if it costs 50, <laughs> if it costs triple the price, 75 right. grand, it still is compelling. That's still a compelling vehicle. You yeah. know, I think it's more so like the whole because if you remember uh, like Huawei, uh, who makes phones and other smart products from China, so got it banned. Like Hue, Huawei. It looks like. Have you ever sure. noticed that? Like, yeah, just so yeah. people know what we're talking about. Why? Yeah, I think it's called <laughs> Huawei. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's so yeah. many. By the way, I just learned this. It's called Remats. It's not called Remac. Oh. Yeah. The like yeah. hypercar company that makes the Navara, which is like the oh. most insane vehicle ever made. Uh, Remats. Uh, yeah. Israel, I believe. Right. Oh, okay. Or Croatia or something like well, that. And, yeah. and nobody oh, nobody yeah, can yeah. agree on how to say Hyundai. Oh, it's a fun day and a Hyundai. Fun day and a Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. Hyundai. Wow. Well, Hyundai. Yeah. Especially the the British guys, the 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 yeah. fully charged guys, and yeah. <laughs> it's like they yeah. all say it differently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so, just don't the commercials tell you like? Well, is it Tesla or Tesla? It's Tesla, right? Ben. Sorry. <laughs> must be my i was born in tejas and so you know i say things weird and stuff yaldav wanted to create mm. a new rule for me <laughs> can't 
Y'all have came. Y'all have not said Texas if you were from here. Yeah. Or Tejas. <laughs> hey, I was from Southern um, Texas. Okay. Hey, we real say. quick, speaking of <laughs> Hyundais and Kias and other cars that are EVs and stuff, uh, producer Andrew, my producer, we, we just spent the last week, you know, working in the van here, and he's looking <laughs> at replacing his Volt, not a Bolt, mm. uh, but he wants, he wants to, he really wants to go full EV for his next car. Uh, he's still obviously quite enticed by Tesla, would love to own a Tesla. Uh, obviously, the hilarious price for full self-driving to be able to do like navigate on autopilot and stuff like that and, and just auto lane change is keeping him from cons- too heavily considering a Tesla at this point. Hmm. Um, and then also just like the fact that you're not going to get one this year really is another yeah, thing. That's really. Yeah. What else would you what else is you really like the EV6, right, Ben? And yeah. Joe, have you have you been in any other EVs? I haven't been in the EV6. It looks nice. Yeah. Like, you know, so so the top like the top three EVs right now, I would say, for most people, right? Because there's some there's specialty ones and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like like I'm sorry, a Porsche Taycan Turbo S is amazing. Mm-hmm. But of course, you can't really recommend that. Oh, there goes my camera. <laughs> I probably didn't plug it in again. Um anyways, I'll keep talking. Uh you don't have a Taycan camera. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So see, Porsche put a thing in my in my office that they just cut my feed. Uh, e- EV6 is incredible. It's very tech, I would say. So it has lots of cool tech features. Um, the Mach E is also really good. I think the interior it's really comfortable. It's like it's like less tech, but drives way better. Like that's in that space. That's like my favorite driving one, outside of maybe Model Y performance. I would say it's probably a bit better, but like. Ford knows how to make good driving cars, but you have to buy the high end Mach E because the lower end ones are not good and the materials are not good. So like high end Mach E is great, hmm. EV6 is great, the Ionic Five is basically the EV6, mm-hmm. but looks super weird. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. <laughs> personally. I look at it. I'm like, <laughs> no, <"Nah, laughs> no, this isn't me. Right. Uh, oh no, I kind of like it. I kind of like the little the, the digital the the square pixelation of the. That's that's because we grew up in the 80s and 90s, right? But uh, (laughs) honestly, though, I look at it and I go, yeah, so so I I think EV6 and Mach-E are the best two outside of the Tesla Model Y. Tesla Model Y is probably still the best, like, but yeah, getting it and price and other things like, like, I think those are the top three. What about, have you been in a Polestar? I forget. Yeah, thumbs down. Yeah, I have two thumbs down. You can't see me, but I have two thumbs down. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) it's a beautifully designed car and... Everything else I know about it is is not good. The range, the price is actually reasonable. Yeah, I don't like the range, but I, I like the design of it. It looks yeah. beautiful. It looks so good. Yes, yeah. and you can get it. Like you can buy it today and get yeah. it. Mm. Um, yeah. What about, have you done the the three series BMW three series EV yet? Mm, the I iX or the i four? I, like I thought it was like yeah, maybe i four. Yeah. No, I, I haven't done either of those yet, but it's bmw and they make good you know so yeah. i'm I'm sure it's a great car the question is how it um just price and availability honestly in range yeah price so is this like a range. retrofitted model or, or three series no, sort of three. <laughs> it's it a it, it's an awful lot like it's on the same platform as the three and correct. four series yeah yeah it, it's okay. not a ground up uh bev as they'd say but mm. it's but and I think they did that intentionally because they wanted it to look and feel like their other cars, which is what they should have done from day one instead of making the i three. But that's my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. So be, and the i seven actually looks incredible. I haven't had a chance to see that, but I don't know if you saw that. That's like okay. If you want luxury EV, it doesn't get more luxury. I, I guess maybe EQS, but like it has a thirty one mm-hmm. inch widescreen thing that pops down from the roof. Oh, it's, I, I have seen that. It's yeah. so nuts. Wait, which one is this? The i7. BMW, BMW i7. i7. It's like their oh, 7 okay. Series, but electric. Because uh-huh. the deal, really, like when you think luxury cars, the truth is what you want is a comfortable back seat. That's what a true luxury car is. It's a big, spacious back seat <laughs> with uh, really nice materials and low vibrations and low sound, low noise. So an S-Class is how you define it, right? So like yeah. we think of luxury as like a Model S and it's like Model S is such a driver's car. It's not like what you think of when you think of luxury in if you're like coming from the auto world. You know what I mean? Right. And a, a rich person with a driver, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't like self-driving. I ha- his his name is Charles and he drives me wherever <laughs> I want to go. 
<laughs> like <laughs> I've had this my whole life. Like if you're just some, you know, rich bastard, that's like, <laughs> that's your reality. You know, how does that work? If you have a professional driver, like, do you have to have, do you normally have two and they go on like 12 hour shifts and they just are like three and one's all on demand all weekend or something? Like, how does that work? What if you, what, when do they have a, a life outside of just like being ready for your, your beckoning call? Well, I think just like a car, if you're not in it, they're parked. So, but they just when, have to sit when there they're not, when wait. they're not actually driving you, they can just do whatever they want. And, but then what if you're like, that's when they sleep. <laughs> it just sounds, how does that work? <laughs> like, yeah. Imagine being like, Hey, uh, Oh, actually I need to go somewhere. And then like, <clears throat> they were about to leave, you know, like go hang out with their family. But, well, they, they usually, know. well, I don't know. So like I have, I have a friend with some really rich parents and they have a driver and yeah, he just kind of like lives with them. It's just kind of mm-hmm. like how it is. Like he doesn't have a life. His life is just being their driver. You know, do, is, okay. Do, do they put the staff downstairs or up in the attic? They have their own separate house. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not um, kidding. When we were, <laughs> like, when we were in Salem, and it's like a three thousand uh, square foot, like way better than nice houses house. we live in. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Sweet, good gig. So man. they're they're doing okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean That's that that crazy. is that is kind of the funny thing, and and actually, and BMW had some pretty uh, snarky. I mean, they were really kind of kind of throwing the, they they were throwing some shade on Tesla and stuff, especially in terms of what a luxury vehicle is, and. You know, I mean, I I don't think that like I think there's some truth to what they were saying that like when people think of luxury cars, they don't think about zero to 60 times. It's not like mm-hmm. something they care about. You know, they care about mm-hmm. how comfortable is that seat that I'm going to be sitting in while someone drives me. Yeah. Well, I've I've never had anything approaching a luxury car in my life. Like I've I've had I mean, I got the Model 3. It's a nice car. Uh, I had a Volkswagen Jetta, which was a nice car, but it it's not like a luxury car with like everything cushy and, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm looking at the pictures, of the, the seven series here and I'm like, yeah, that's, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so like w- when I think about what my next car might be, I, I think that's the direction I would want to go in more than performance or than all the other stuff. It's kind of like, I just kind of would like a fancy car for once Ladies in my life, gentlemen. you know? I could have a heart attack next week and, and never have a fancy car. <laughs> we just found out that Joe, Got old. He wants the low and slow. Well, you know, I ride dirty. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, there's that screen. Yeah. You know what they say, though? You know, if you're important, people will wait. So, you know, you don't need to worry (laughs) about it. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're seeing on the screen here is a guy sitting in the back of this seat, this this uh, car with this 31 inch widescreen thing. I mean, this is what people really want. If you're if you're really into luxury um stuff oh that ceiling ceiling. yeah it has this uh the little lights there the coolest glass roof i've ever seen was in the uh porsche Taycan um gts that i drove and it had a like it could go opaque right so yeah yeah there was like a setting and you could have it do auto or you could just set it yourself because i remember sitting at a stoplight we were out in the desert and i looked up and i'm like I can look directly at the sun and it's like, not a like, I don't. And I'm like, what is even going on here? And it was the whole, it, it like, you know, caught that the sun was right there and like think like made it mm-hmm. almost completely mm-hmm. blacked out. I'm like, that is, mm-hmm. that is that's cool. one thing I wish Tesla roofs had because I really like the, the glass roof, but like, it's not clear enough. You know, it's not low enough opacity during like, you know, day or especially at night, like trying to see stars or something. Yeah. It's way yeah. too dark for that. So it would be cool if they could do that, uh, you know, electric thing that's auto fades like a Boeing 787 window or whatever. Yeah. Mm. I think that's super cool. That's kind of the funny thing, right? Like like Tesla really changed the game, I think. And I, I love what they've did, what they've done with the whole first principles thing. Like I still, if I ever get in a car that's not a Tesla, I will leave it running and unlocked and just <laughs> all walk. Because, yeah. you know, it, it's so many things that they did. It's like, yes, everybody should copy this. Um, but then- these other car companies, I mean, they have like some next level stuff, right? Like right. things that I, you know, it's just, it's just your preference at this point, which is really cool. I think that as an EV fan, that's kind of the cool thing. Like if you mm-hmm. really want a luxury car 
and and you're not thinking like, oh, I need it to play YouTube or something. Like if you, you want to sit in the back, like there is a car for you, right? If you want to drive an insane performance, you can take it to the track and like blow people's doors off. There's a car for you. Like there's so many good options yeah. now. It's really awesome. You know, the only yeah. the only segment that is really still missing in my mind is the the lower end. Uh, mm -hmm. more economical version you know i still am clamoring for like the honda civic ev mm -hmm. right that's like yeah. seventeen thousand dollars and has like pump windows and whatever yeah. but it's so cheap to operate that it just people will kind of be forced to get it right like why it wouldn't make sense right. to buy a, a gas version of this it's way too expensive and and i'm i'm afraid especially with the supply constraints and other things coming up that that is still you know pretty far out yeah and and on that note too, like I still think like you know point to, or little trans like last mile transit vans too. I cannot yeah. believe that mm -hmm. we still are running around with gas versions of those. Yeah. And, you know, with the the USPS United States Postal Service yeah. purchasing like ninety percent gas, not even a hybrid. Like that is well, the that is yeah, the vehicle yeah. that should be at least hybrid or easily could be serviceable by a fully electric. It's just like well, how did. I mean, it's kind of happening, right? That? I mean, I think I think they have a contract with Stellantis to buy a bunch of them and to to make them and and buy them, um, and then of course Rivian is making the Amazon delivery vans, mm -hmm. which apparently is part of the reason why it's been taking so long to get a Rivian, is because they've been so prioritizing that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, because they kind of have. Yeah, it's a big order. It's a big yeah. order. Well, and and hey, I'm all for it, but give me my damn truck already. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm speaking of trucks, the... just real quick. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. Did Did you see Marquez's video with that like 1978 truck that they converted? Yeah, the old Ford uh, 100 old Ford. or whatever it was. Yeah, mm -mm. uh, yeah, yeah, F100, I believe. Yeah, mm -mm. I'll take a look at that. Can I... I share this? Oh, do you need? If you send me the <laughs> link, I can post it. Oh, okay. Yeah, here I'll do that. I know which one it is. We are, we are so old. I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm I mean, making fun yeah, of it. Can I? Can I share that one? Just kidding. How do you kids do that? Which button is it? Yeah, because they debuted exactly. this at SEMA. Yeah, here you go. I got it. All right. Ding, 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 ding. Let me see it. Yeah, it's see, cool. we could We could actually mark this clip in River and be like, remember that time, that bit where we had where we were slow. Oh, that is cool already. Yep. Love I it. love a good electric conversion. What I what I like about it is that it is like all the like the window is manual and like all the original yeah stuff in there. Like it just it, there's something tactile in about manual stuff like mm -hmm. that, and it just kind of like I don't know. It, it throws me back to when I was a kid and some of the stuff that was around then. I think that's going to be a new commodity almost. Like I think there's a lot of demand coming up and already happening for like just high craftsmanship, you know, things that are handmade or, or low run produced mm. and that are that, you know, is more analog stuff like that. Like I think the, the car company singer, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but mm. they, uh, they reproduce like 1970s Porsches from Ooh. like from scratch look up singer motors hmm. uh s-i-n-g-e-r motors ben mm -hmm. um but um i mean they are like extremely like yeah half a million dollars or one million dollar cars <laughs> and they're exquisitely made though like it's like mm -hmm. just absolutely stunning yeah. and um i want to know all the gauges so and stuff are Oh, it's, it's incredible. And like, I think there's a demand for this type of stuff more and more as we get more and more digital, there's going to be a, a you know, more and more demand for things that are just really, really high end and, and require well, some craftsmanship, you know, a thousand percent agree. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I have a watch on right now, which you'll notice is not a smart watch. And the reason is because I love the craftsmanship of it. I love, yeah. you know, that, that, that. Like, and, and, you know, I didn't include it in the video, but I did the Model S versus the Porsche Taycan video. And that was kind of the comparison I was making. You know, the Model S is an incredible vehicle. Mm. It, it's a computer on wheels. It's like an Apple Watch. Yeah. The Porsche Taycan is not that. It, it, it's, it's, it does, you can get in it and go to work and back. Yes. But it is a very different 
highly crafted machine that is meant to give you this experience of being connected in in your your driving it's more like mm -hmm. like a rolex or like a fine like a good you know piece of, a, a a beautiful watch it's not meant to be an apple watch right mm -hmm. and and i, I think mm -hmm. you're right I, well it, the good news is that it's people's preference you know what i mean um mm -hmm. definitely li like the apple watch is is probably better for most people but some of us depending on what you're doing may want something a little bit more custom or more i don't know curated mm -hmm. i guess is what you're saying right yeah you know what gets me is like um there's communities and in, in like deep 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 interest on very specific things like watches mm -hmm. you know um there's a group of friends that i have sometimes i feel like i uh i just miss the meeting or something like like they're all into at a very deep level, these very specific things, and they all know about it. And I'm just sitting there like, what's going on? <laughs> when did you guys... <laughs> really? When did you guys come up with... Wait like, a minute. They were talking about watch... They were talking about this one specific brand of watch, and I don't even remember what it was now, but they were just like going into like, all oh, the things... Oh, well, this one was made in Italy with the thing, and, the, and the, the watch handle came from this certain type of rock from the Caucasus Mountains. I mean, just like yeah. getting all like super deep into this one brand of watch, and I'm just sitting there like, I know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, it's so many things, right? Like the, I think this is what makes a lot of things special. Like wine is very much the, the same way. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like the special thing about wine isn't so much how it tastes. It's it's the story behind mm -hmm. how it came to be, right? If mm -hmm. you just want to get drunk, that's one thing, you know? Same with like any kind of fine spirit or whatever, even craft beers, you know? I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just me or the where I live, but there's been such a renaissance of like caring about what you consume, caring mm -hmm. about these other things in a deeper way than just what it gives, what it does for you. At the end of the you day. Know? And my parents, I feel like, are kind of almost in a, in a very not like, uh, I guess, hipster way would be the best way to describe it about it at all. They are like, if someone recommends something to them, it is gospel. It could be a stranger they just met six seconds ago. They're like, oh, have you guys tried uh uh, Joe's Crab Shack over here. They have wonderful blah blah. They're like, <laughs> no, we met the nicest guy, and he told us all about this place called Joe's Crab Shack. And it was, you know, it's like that's yeah. it. You know, just that human yeah. connection to it, and yeah, like, yeah. They, it's it's great. Yeah. You know, Hashtag influenced. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's like why don't they just uh, you know try out their own restaurants and and, and form their own opinions? Bum 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 ba da. Yeah. Why the don't they just? Remember that amazing. horrible song I wrote for it? Oh, God. Thank God. That's <laughs> why don't they just do this? Why don't they just do that? It's All like right. So I'm looking through Why Don't They Just Now. Um, did any stand out to you, Tim? Or I found one here that might, that uh, I guess is interesting to me. I'm not going to lie. I didn't, we know we're, bunch of I didn't know we were doing Why Don't They Just. So they all stood out to me in the fact that we're doing it. Why don't they put GPS on Leo satellites so they have better tracking? Uh, or do I mean, they not? do that? <laughs> they, they they don't need GPS because GPS is literally just like triangulated signals, you know, like using the radio waves. And you can just do that with ground stations and satellites anyway. Satellites like can be triangulated to the same degree of accuracy as GPS. Uh, but sometimes there's, it, I think in the future, honestly, there will be a way to do that a little bit better uh, with certain satellites, you know, like, um, uh, you know, I think, I think there will be a, because there are like dead spots where a satellite, you know, something could happen like, well, we have to wait a full orbit to actually know, did it, did it get hit or, you know, or whatever before it's over a ground tracking station again. So mm -hmm. there could be something like that where, where they, you know, are in constant communication with a something to, and more accurately position. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good question. All right. Did anyone else have anything to add to that? Sorry, I just ate it. I just <laughs> took it and just. No. So is, uh. Are GPS satellites usually geostationary? No, they're medium, medium Earth orbit. Okay, okay. So they circle the Earth twice a day. Neo, exactly, instead of Neo, instead of instead of Meow. once. That's what it is. Yeah, instead of uh, instead of once a day, like Geo. Oh. Yeah, and I don't quite get how it works, but it is something where like you would think they would need to be totally stationary, but it's that's what I assume. Yeah, I'd... yeah. I gotta I gotta learn how they how they work really well and 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 incorporate that into a video about, uh, mm. you know, orbits and stuff. 
Why don't they yeah. just make all gas stations add at least one electric car charger? I was just looking at that one. Great I don't question. know that they have to make it happen, but I think they will want to do that eventually. Definitely. Yeah. You know? We were just talking Andrew and I were just talking about that yesterday. We were driving by a gas station. He's like, Man, why don't all these gas stations just have some electric chargers? And it's yeah. like Yeah, they probably Well, so will. here's the deal though. Like I see things like Bucky's here in in texas like the the big giant convenience stores with the restaurants inside basically a walmart and the parking lot is all (laughs) gas pumps and i'm dead serious it's no you're right you're right there's no electric chargers there and i'm like how is how of all the places where you could actually spend some time in here it's not just some like corner you know gas station you could actually spend time in here while your car's charging yeah i mean i i I haven't stopped at well, one in a while because they don't have any electric chargers. Well, superchargers, Tesla actually, one Tesla, Tesla did uh, it, it partnered with Bucky's actually. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and actually, I think one of the first ones is, is coming online really soon. So, yeah, it's funny Good. to see that. Okay, yeah, because that's, that's that, the but that makes sense. Perfect one. Yes. Yeah. The, the one thing about uh, is the only <laughs> response I have to this is like that we sh- and uh, Joe, you've said it beautifully before that we have to change our way of thinking about charging. Because right. gas cars and electric cars just fundamentally don't work the same. Like I would argue, in, in maybe I'm just being uh, snarky or whatever, that every gas station out there likely has electricity and therefore does have electric charging stations in it, right? Like there is a plug mm-hmm. somewhere I could plug into if right. I needed to, yeah. right? I mean, look at what Ewan McGregor did on The Long Way Up, where they drove these motorcycles through Patagonia and like places where they're literally there's could not be more remote and they still were able to find people's houses to charge at and whatever. So mm-hmm. like we have infrastructure, it exists. It's called the electricity grid. Uh, but if we want fast chargers, that's a different story. And we don't need them nearly as much as we do um, uh, gas stations, mm-hmm. right? Cause you can't fill up gas at your house uh, as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, maybe down in Texas, you can do that, but most oh, most places you can't do that, right? <laughs> On the farms, yeah. <laughs> my my yeah. grandparents had a giant like gas Little, thing that they oh, were yeah. yeah. biodiesel Same. or something, yeah. So yeah. I, I just think we have to change our thinking about it. You certainly don't need them nearly as much, but absolutely, and I, there there is an infrastructure bill or part of the infrastructure bill is to have some I think five hundred thousand charging stations out there. I don't know. One thing mm-hmm. I will I'll just say on this uh, is that uh, so I've I've you know, when I started reviewing all non Teslas, I have to go take them to charge places. Right. And so I've spent a lot of time now at Electrify America, at EV go at charge point at all these other ones. It is not nearly as bad as I thought as it was going to be like okay. superchargers are still, still cream of the crop, but where I live, there are actually more, if you were to combine EV go, which has fast charging, um, Electrify America and ChargePoint DC fast charging or whatever, there are more stations, like twice as many stations just about for that as then there are Tesla superchargers. Now, at the superchargers, like we have one by my house, it has like 48 stalls. It's stupid. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's <laughs> wow. gigantic. So yeah. yes, but my point being that if you're traveling and you need a place to charge, if you combine, like it's actually not nearly as bad as I think some people online make it out to be. And I that was my per- perception before. It was like, it's awful. But after having done it, and I go on trips. I, you know, I go to LA, I go to Phoenix with these cars that aren't Teslas. And I'm like, it's it's actually like, other than every now and then you're like, this one, why isn't this working? Ah, other than like that experience, which happens, mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. not nearly as bad as I think people make it out to be. Good. That's good. It's good to hear. Yeah. Yep. Um, something that I keep saying, and I, I, I have seen... In some, vi- I think it was one of the Transport Evolves videos. They just had like a clip of it, and I think this was in England. But, um, sorry, the UK. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> I used I used England and Britain interchangeably in a TMI video, and uh, how dare people got mad. You? I know. How <laughs> dare I? Um, but no, the the idea of just putting chargers on light poles, mm-hmm. right? At street lights and stuff. Like yeah. in like you know every grocery store has like street lights in the parking lot. Like why not put little chargers on there and mm-hmm. it might be level two, but if it you're going to be, be inside yeah. for 30 minutes or an hour doing your shopping or whatever, however long it takes, but you get a little something out of it. Um, obviously at any office parks or parking garages and stuff, it's, it's a perfect place for it and malls and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's, that's kind of feel like the paradigm shift with 
with electric is that it kind of comes to you. You don't go to it, hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you because just it put is it everywhere, everywhere already. Yeah. 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 Like we have something like 10 billion electric outlets in the U S right. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. lots of opportunity. Yep. Yeah. All righty. Well, what are you guys working on while we wrap? Joe. I'm working on watching your new video. Oh, it's a longie. It's a long one, and and I I hardly ever I, I I like I said I barely even been on YouTube this week, so I haven't had a chance to look at it. But I need to carve out some time. Oh, let me know what you think. It's it's uh it's we get deep. <laughs> you always do. Yeah, always do. Yeah, yeah. That's but what, awesome. what's your next what next video are you working on? Are you talking to me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you talking to me? Um, I got a couple of fun ones on the way. Actually, Monday's video um uh, is about a guy um well he's in england um who lost his memory he lost his memory and he lost his ability to form new memories so he kind of just lives in a 10 second loop Mm, yeah 10 seconds wow i've heard this story before i think yeah um i think he's known as the guy with the seven second memory or whatever but um it's it's kind of fascinating because your your memory works in these various different ways and you can remember certain things that are like called semantic memory, which is like knowing the capital of Vermont or whatever, you know, but, mm-hmm. uh, but then there's uh, episodic memories, which are like actual memories of your past, like something that you experienced and whatnot. And so like some of his memories, they don't know if it's like, he remembers having been in a, a, a bomb shelter during World War II when the Germans were bombing, but they don't know if he actually remembers that or if he just knows that people were sheltering from yeah. bombs in World War yeah. II kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we kind of use that as a jumping off point to look at how memory works and uh, Does it's actually he, pretty fascinating. So he legit can only remember for 10 seconds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're like taking a, a poop, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're like yeah. what where am i what's happened and like all of a exactly. sudden you're, you're like why am i in the toilet like how does yeah. that might just stand up and be like what was i doing oh no <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. like like you're eating a sandwich cleaning up and be like whose mess was this like why am i doing this you're, you're eating a sandwich and you're like wait why is this what, what and then like by the time you even recover from realizing what you're doing it would be time yeah. to do it again that, i yeah, can't even nightmare. imagine yeah an actual wow. i mean that that's the thing is like it's 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 really impossible to even imagine what his experience yeah. of life is like yeah. um he he's married oh, and wow. uh, and there's been there's some documentaries out here and we use some clips <laughs> I mean, from it but like are we sure he's married like is... <laughs> no 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 the the <laughs> wife will like leave the room for a minute and come back in and he goes oh and he runs to her and holds her like he hasn't seen her in years well that'd be nice <laughs> well, it, it, it eventually drove her crazy. Yeah. Oh. Um, but uh, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if that's true. But um, but uh, what was the other thing about him that was? In, oh, he he was a, like a virtuoso musician before all this happened. Wow. And he doesn't have any memory of it, but he can still play. He can hmm. still like play the piano and stuff. And it's like he'll sit down and he'll say, "I don't know how to play. I don't know what this is." And then he'll just like Broom, start playing. And wow. Yeah. Wow. So he remembered all that. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, he keeps a journal. And the journal is just one line after another, after another, after another of him saying, I am now awake. Oh, wow. And that he'll is... go back and cross out his older post because he doesn't believe that he actually wrote it, even though it's in his handwriting. Wow. Anyway, it, I, you'll have to see the video. It's like it's, Memento, it's right? Remember that movie? Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah. 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 That's yeah. fascinating. So that is that's coming up on Monday, and I've got another one uh, the next Monday that I'm I'm pretty excited about. Um, it's pretty interesting. I'm taking a look at the spice trade from uh, you know back in history and stuff, and looking at how that kind of made the world the way it is today. Like Whoa. salt, is salt a part uh, of this? Spices, nutmeg, peppers, mm. spices, paprika. paprika. Yeah. Interesting, because I, I know um, there's that whole crazy thing with salt in India, and it was like the, the salt trade. It, there was like a whole, like, there was a book on it that just has yeah. this fascinating history of salt. Well, that's what that's what Columbus was trying to find, was a, a oh, westward. Really? Yeah. So um, it had something to do with the uh, the Ottomans taking over Istanbul. Hmm. Well, Constantinople, they turned it into Istanbul. But um, yeah, they, they kind of controlled the spice trade that kind of flowed through there. They kind of went through the that area you know and the suez and whatnot 
that's not the same as Istanbul, but anyway, you get the point. They, yeah. they started, they kind of shut all that down. And so now they're like, okay, we need to find a new route to get to the, to the Indies to, to get these spices and stuff. Cause like it was a, a pound of nutmeg was worth more than a pound of gold. At the wow. Time. That's crazy. Yeah. And so, so what they did was they had to start sailing around Africa because they couldn't, you yeah. know, the Suez Canal didn't exist yet. So they, they had to go all the way around Africa. Well, the problem is there's a gyre in the South Pacific that goes up the African coast. So they were like going against the grain and it was really difficult. And they finally figured out, well, you have to go around this way and the gyre will just swing you around. So you kind of use the, <laughs> the, the, you know, you momentum of the gyre. But, but one guy went just a little bit too far. Portuguese guy, a little too far, landed in South America, and that's why people in Brazil speak Portuguese. Wow. And um, yeah, there's all kinds of He's interesting stuff like that. Like uh, there, there was an island called Ran. Or is it Run? I think it's Ran. Um, <laughs> was it a past tense island or a present tense? <laughs> um, it used to be an island or it's currently an yeah. So the Dutch, and this is another thing is like the Dutch created the Dutch East Indies Corporation, which is like the most powerful corporation that ever existed. Mm -hmm. It had its own army with 30,000 soldiers, wow. a company. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they took over all these islands in, in the, in the Indies and in what is now Indonesia. And uh, there was one island that the British still had control over and they traded the island they got the Britain, the British to trade that island for another island that the Dutch owned, which is where uh, they set up New Amsterdam. In other words, Manhattan. So they traded Manhattan to yeah, the British, right. and New Amsterdam became New York because of that. Yeah, yeah. for spice. I remember that story. Right. Like uh, spice explains so much about the world, and it's just fascinating. It's crazy. Yeah. Ben, do you make videos anymore? Or are you just <laughs> hanging out with us. I'm just hanging out with you guys. Um, I've got so I got an update on the water panels. Coming out next week. Um, um, my Rivian should be here next week as well. Sweet. So, That's so I'm gonna oh yeah, you said the yeah. I'm gonna do all kinds of dumb things with that. Um, <laughs> jump to, bit, jump. To to do that relevant. thing the kid did in L.A. with the Model S with the Rivian. <laughs> well, it's funny. My buddy Ryan from Kilowatts jumped his, but I remember telling him, "I'm like, it's just a thing you have to do." I'm, I'm like, no, like, you know, like that didn't count, dude. Like, this is YouTube, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, technically all four wheels were off the ground, but you got to go big here. Like, you got to yeah. take it to that hill in LA and, and make it happen. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Rivian's coming, so I'm going to do a lot with that. I've got, it's two-year update time on the Model Y as well. So Jenny and I, I've had like three different cars not show up that were supposed to be here. So potentially a bunch yeah. of new EVs and then uh, the Ford Lightning. We did we even talk about that. Ford Lightning is now in production and I was supposed to be there at the uh, in, in Tejas um, this past week. Uh, but but I got COVID and so I couldn't go. Um, and so, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> but yeah, l lots of fun stuff happening in the EV world. Um, and then I'm taking July and August off. So. You know, I'll still come hang with you nerds, but like, I'm not going to make videos or do any of that stuff or take summer off, hang with the kids, enjoy the family. I should probably do that myself. Actually. That's awesome. <laughs> you can come hang with my kids. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, how are, how are you doing out there? You got the news van. Oh, What's next? Well, obviously your camera's going to quit on us before oh, the show geez, ends. Again. But, um, of course. Yeah. Uh, real quick little rundown of my month. Um, I'm going really quick going home for Mother's Day going to D.C. for the Smithsonian for an event, going to uh, a thing in San Francisco. This is all, by the way, this is all by Thursday. Um, <laughs> and then and then Las Vegas for American Ninja Warrior to watch that. Yes. With my family. Then watch, and then uh, L.A. the next, like, that next week for hopefully our product photo shoots, all of our new products, like our model yeah. rockets and everything. Meanwhile, the whole time I'm traveling, I'm going to be finishing up all my Elon interview stuff and getting that released. Um, I'm going to I'm they're going to go like every two weeks, I think, actually, believe it or not. Uh, there's going to be about four parts. So oh, cool. it'll be a while before people. The good thing is, like, people are begging me, like, where are they? Where are they? It's going to be so outdated. We didn't really talk about anything topical. Honestly, it's like super long form, like rocket engineering. So no one's missing out mm -hmm. on any juicy details, really, at this point. So. <laughs> um, I was intentional about that. So, um, I, I really it, it like your, anyway. I really like your interviews with him because you guys are able to 
like talk about real things because so many of the interviews Elon does are just like people that don't know anything. And so they're asking him the most basic questions and he's just repeating yeah. the same answers he said a thousand times in other interviews. Yes. So like, yeah. I, I can't, like yours are some of the only times I can like actually be like, oh, okay, this will be interesting. Otherwise I'm just like, I've okay. heard this a bazillion times. Like, mm, yeah, because yeah. he kind of has his, his answers down for most of those generic like. Yeah, and that's all Starship? people ask. Do you really think humans will get to Mars? You know, like, yeah, yeah. I hear that stuff like every, yeah. every what, what, Why do you do this? Well, I need a future to be excited about. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We've been yep. hearing that for like ever. Come on. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. so, so when will full self-driving happen? Oh, yeah. Well, my friends. Okay. We'll see you in, in our, our little Chris. Ludicrous, ludicrous, um, future, flopstress, <laughs> flopster. <laughs> <laughs>